city on the Mississippi River, near the Gulf of Mexico. Nicknamed the Big Easy, it's known for its round-the-clock nightlife, vibrant live music scene, and spicy, singular cuisine reflecting its history as a melting pot of cultures. Embodying its festive spirit is Mardi Gras, the late winter carnival famed for ruckus costume parades and street parties. The historic heart of the city is the French Quarter, famous for its vibrant nightlife along Bourbon Street. Founded in 1718 by French colonialists, New Orleans was once the territorial capital of French Louisiana before being traded to the United States in the Louisiana Purchase of 1803. New Orleans displays a distinctive variety of Louisiana voodoo, due in part to the merging with African and Afro-Caribbean Roman Catholic beliefs. on hop off bus in New Orleans you can take and they stopped right at Marie Laveau's gravesite. Marie Laveau is known as the voodoo queen and you can find her grave has got X's mark in the spot. Talk about spooky. I wanted to know why there was a voodoo queen in a Catholic cemetery. That's what I wanted to know. What I found out stunned me. She was actually a devout Catholic. Even when this woman was known as the voodoo queen she still attended mass in that church in the square. So you come in here, the story is, you put three X's in her tomb, you make a request, if it's granted, you're supposed to return, circle the three X's you marked on her tomb, then leave her an appropriate offering. Instead of marking in a tomb, what I've seen individuals do, they'll leave three objects. You see the three coins here, they'll leave three cigarettes, three cigars, whatever three objects they may have with them. And they'll come back if they feel the request is granted and leave offerings. As you see, this area has been cleaned up. You don't know it, but it's been cleaned up. Come to find out, voodoo is actually a religion, religion that is, originating over in West Africa. Now my understanding is, of course, with the Atlantic slave trade, the slaves, they weren't allowed to practice their religion in the new world. So generations later, you now have a population of individuals, as far as I'm concerned, who no longer recall their traditional West African religion. They may have recalled some of the rituals. So they're performing these voodoo rituals, yet I feel they were combining them with their Christian faith holding beliefs and Native American shamanism, and you have what is better known today as voodoo. This is where your spells, your charms, the curses, but hoodoo does work because it comes down to the power of belief. A walk through St. Louis Cemetery Number 1 in New Orleans is literally a walk through history. Out of all the grave sites, one is most commonly visited. It is easily found because of a series of red X's scratched with brick onto the front of the tomb. Visitors make the marks as a form of voodoo prayer, for this is the grave of New Orleans' most famous voodoo queen, Marie Laveau. When anyone mentions the word voodoo, the images that come to mind are those of zombies and witches, Satanism, black magic, and primeval tribal dance undulations. All images primarily introduced by television and motion pictures. But true voodoo, as originated in Louisiana in the early 1800s, is far from the widely publicized stereotype. In fact, voodoo is first and foremost a religion, 
an unusual mixture of traditional African beliefs and Roman Catholicism. It was facilitated because the voodooists and um, others who practice traditional African religions saw many similarities between the voodoo gods and the Catholic saints. And it was forbidden for the African ancestors to practice their own religion. So under the guise of practicing Roman Catholicism, they practiced or worshipped a voodoo god. The most famous practitioner of voodoo was Marie Laveau. Born in 1794, Laveau was a mulatto of mixed black, white, and Indian blood. As such, she was from birth a free woman of color. After a failed marriage, Laveau supported herself by working as a hairdresser to the wealthy white and Creole women of New Orleans. At this time, she also learned the practices of voodoo. As a result of her talent for the theatrical, her business acumen, and her personal charisma, Marie's reputation soon eclipsed that of other voodoo queens. Under Marie Laveau's guidance, voodoo rituals held at Lake Pontchartrain became huge spectacles, particularly the ritual held every year on June 24th, St. John's Eve. The St. John's Eve ritual uh, occurs during the time of the summer solstice. And St. John that they're speaking about is St. John the Baptist, who became equated with the voodoo god. So that St. John's Eve ritual is a perfect example of how many cultures have uh, mixed and come together. Kunju lady, not long ago, in New Orleans, Louisiana, named Marie Laveau. Believe it or not, strange as it seems, she made a fortune selling voodoo and in and dream. Marie Catherine Laveau was a Louisiana Creole practitioner of voodoo who was renowned in New Orleans. Although some references to Marie Laveau in popular culture refer to her as a witch, locals say she is more properly described as a voodoo queen. Because of her prominence within the history of voodoo in New Orleans, Laveau has inspired a number of artistic renditions as a visual motif, as well as numerous songs about Marie Laveau have been recorded. My name is Robert Sepper. Thank you for sharing your Saturday morning with me. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. Kindly share this video if you enjoyed it. And have a wonderful weekend. Until next time. <laughs>